Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer. Amen. Okay, I want to start something off. It has nothing to do with my sermon. It has nothing to do with it. I just thought we should do something fun and try something. Um, if you were at chapel this week, you are not allowed to answer. Okay? Just sorry. That's just how it works. If you were a kid and you were at chapel and your parents were, weren't, see if they can guess it right. Okay? Um, this past week we were talking about being really observant. I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to give you, it's going to be a pretty short time, and I'm going to then ask you a question. We'll just see if you can answer it, okay? Um, let's do number one. One, two, three, done. All right. My question is, you can't answer. You were here. Ah. Oh. I'd have to give you a different question. How many dots were on the wings? Wait, there was two answers. I heard somebody say two. Okay, we got somebody with two. Anybody thinks, somebody said six. Anybody think six? No, there's a couple. How many think? Eight. Good. You should be able to count this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. All right. Ready for number two? One, two, three. All right. How many tomatoes were there? Oh, good. You're getting better. Yeah. I'm not going to put that back up. You got that one, right? All right. Ready for number? Here we got one more. One, two, three. What was the number on the ball. One. One. Good. Okay, last one, most difficult. I still had pair, or people afterwards still not be able to get it. So get ready. Ready? One, two, three. What was the animal in? <sighs> you were here! Ah. <laughs> oh. Somebody who wasn't here, what do you got? Giraffe. How many saw a giraffe? Some of you need to practice your eyes for hunting season. I believe it starts very soon here. The giraffe is right. There's his head. Oh, there he is. See him? Everybody got it? Pastor Tyner? He looked confused. All right, so now everybody is up to speed on where the giraffe is. Um, I said that had nothing to do, but I just thought it was fun that we, the kids had fun this week on that. Um, we're wrapping up our sermon series on stepping out in faith. Uh, it's been a, a neat uh, story, neat uh, journey, uh, especially for me. And uh, as I was looking at it this week, it reminds me of the two realities that we have to live in. Uh, there are two um, paradoxes that we kind of work through. Uh, first one, we have this relationship with God, right? I mean, we all have this relationship, this vertical relationship with God, and our relationship with Him doesn't always, uh, well, it, it doesn't always seem to be the same, right, vertically, and with our people around us. Uh, it's kind of this neat little way of doing it, this cross, right? you got a, a vertical relationship with God. you got this horizontal relationship uh, with people and others, right? Um, in your relationship with God, if you mess up, you sin, you can go to God and you can say, God, I am sorry, right? Please forgive me. Is that sin gone? Is that sin gone? Yes. yes. Is there any remainder? No. Right? Jesus takes care of everything in that, right? What he did on the cross. It, you're totally forgiven. Now, 
uh, those uh, in this horizontal plane. In this horizontal plane, uh, our actions, our uh, relationships with others matter, right? Um, if I am, if I'm really good neighbor and I like to go mow uh, their yard, take care of them, uh, am I is my horizontal relationship better off? Yeah. You know, my neighbor might like me more. Uh, the problem is they don't always mix together. See, you can have um, a really good neighbor who mows and takes care of other people and, and, and is loving towards others, but if they have no relationship with God, does that... Do, we can't take their goodness in the world and put it into their relationship with God, right? Uh, there's no way that that increases their goodness in front of God, because God's going to say, well, you didn't know who I was, even though you're really nice. And uh, it goes even the other way, right? You can be a murderer, you can be a rapist, you can be uh, the worst person ever, and horizontally, your life is a chaos, but if you know who Jesus Christ is, and you come to forgiveness with him, are you forgiven? Yeah. And the stepping out in faith is this part right in the middle. This is where you are. It's taking your relationship with God and pushing it out to your horizontal uh, friends. Today we're going to be looking at um, Daniel in the lion's den. How many read that this week? Good. We're starting to get better at everybody reading. Um, Daniel, I've always read it, and I always read it from Daniel's standpoint, okay, right? I mean, we all look at it, what did Daniel do? He got into a lion's den, right? This past week, I read it from the king's perspective, and that's what I want us to look at today. I want you to look at it from the king's perspective. Let's take a look at this first one. This is verse 4. Then the presidents and the satraps, okay, that's basically just a fancy name for governors, but with that, uh, sought to find ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom. Okay, so the other, guard, or the other uh, officials are trying to attack and to get after Daniel, but they could not find no, or they could find no ground uh, for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. Okay. So Daniel's a good guy, right? They can't find anything. They don't like him, so they want to get rid of him. So the next couple of verses here, they're going to talk about, they're going to go to the king and they're going to ask the king for something. All the presidents of the kingdom and uh, the prefects and the satraps and the counselors and the governors are, are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction that whoever makes uh, penitentiary to any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the lion's den. So they come to him and they say, hey, king, I got a great idea. You have done a great job in the land. You're a really good king. Tell you what, I, I think everybody, everybody should give you praise this, this entire month. Let's do it for, uh, let's go for it. Let's just do it for 30 days, right? Everybody has to come together and we have to Praise you, because you've done such a good job of taking care of your people. Now, I don't know about you, from a king's perspective, I'm going, eh, man, I've done a pretty good job. Look at the, everything's going well, there's peace in the land, I'm taking care of you, uh, there's no, maybe no more hunger, man, I, I'm doing a really good job. Yeah, let, let's go ahead, let's, let's have some fun, let's. 
maybe everybody should worship me for, for a, you know, a little bit, right? Because I've done a good job. And he buys into this, right? He buys into this idea. And he says, now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it can become a uh, charge according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, uh, which cannot be revealed. This law, basically, once it was enacted, there was no way to overturn it. Once it started, you weren't able to say, oh, I didn't really mean it. It had to be an injunction. It had to start and could not happen. And therefore, the king signed the document, the injunction. This was not a wise move, right? We can all get that. In that horizontal idea, he, he gets this idea that it's okay for me to be important, but he misses the consequences of what it's going to be, right? He misses the idea of the, the consequences of me doing this. There could be other problems that come along. This is what I want to talk about today, it, and it's in this vertical and horizontal. When we try to make ourselves more important in the horizontal, when we try to become more important, guess what? We sin against the vertical with God. And we sin against others. Let me put it this way. If we have an addiction, maybe it's pornography or alcohol or, well, I even now write addiction to our phones, right? Does that hurt my relationship with others? You better believe it. If I have an explosive nature of anger and I explode, I may be totally right, but my explosion, does that hurt my relationship with others? You better believe it. I had a professor put it this way. <laughs> he said uh, there was this couple, this married couple who had been married for uh, quite a few years, and uh, the husband just, well, he decided to have an affair. And he gets into an affair. Uh, he realizes about halfway through the affair and goes, man, I really shouldn't be doing this. Ends it. And he goes to God and he says, God, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Does God forgive him? You better believe it. But does it fix his relationship in the horizontal? Just go ask the wife. I'm not saying it couldn't be restored, but go ask the wife. See, our sin, it's one of the weirdest things, because in our relationship with God, our sins are forgiven, they are atoned for, they are taken care of, no remainder, no issues. But in our our day to day, there's some consequences. Sin has uh, struggles. For Daniel, he's got a big one coming up. The king, his sin of thinking he is better than everybody else, that he is most praiseworthy. When Daniel disagrees with that and goes and prays to God, are there consequences for that sin of, of the king? You better believe it. Daniel has to go to the lion's den. Next little bit, let's just read this really quick here. When Daniel knew that the documents had been signed, he went into his house where he 
had a window in the upper chamber towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he had done previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petitions and pleading before God. Then they came near and said before the king, certainly the injunction, O king, did you not sign an injunction that anyone who makes petitions to any god or man within 30 days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the lion's den? And the king answered, The things stand fast according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revealed. Now I want you to look at what the king says next. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is, or, uh, then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from uh, Judea, pays no attention to you, O king, and an injunction you have signed, but making his petition three times a day. Then the king said, when he heard these things as much distress and set his mind to deliver Daniel and he uh, labored till the sun went down to rescue him. See, I, I think the king knew his sin. It's talking about how he is distressed that Daniel, how Daniel is going to pay the consequences to his mistake. He's struggling with that. We struggle so often of our sins and our issues because they do have lasting impact in this world. It's just a reality. I, mean, I want you to think about it for a second. Do you have any sins that you've done in the last, well, let's say six months that are still lingering and having some issues, even though you're forgiven totally from God, are you still having some relationship issues? Or, okay, I'm totally guilty of that, right? Uh, I've got, I mean, my guess is each one of us, we have something probably way back in our history. Is there somebody who's wronged us or sinned against us and we're still, it's still eating us up? Is there uh, relationship? Maybe we've made, maybe it was us or maybe it was them. And you had a good friend and now you're no longer in friendship with them because that sin or whatever issue has separated you apart. Each one of us has these broken relationships. Even though we know that we're forgiven by God, we still have issues. Because sin still has consequences in this life. So what are we supposed to do with that? The king makes an incredible move. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is law of the Medes and the Persians that no injunction or ordinance of the king established to be changed. So he knows that it can't be established. He then goes to Daniel, right? Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the lion's den, and the king declared to Daniel, may your, king, or may your God, whom you serve, certainly deliver you, or continually deliver you. Who does he give it to? Who does the king give his broken relationship to? He gives them to God. He doesn't try to fix it himself. There's nothing he can do. He takes that broken relationship and gives it back to God. He says, God, I need you to be the one in charge. I need you to be the one who takes this issue and fixes it. We can't do it on our own. 
We can't try to fix it ourselves. We have to give it to him. Too often we try to do it ourselves, but the only person who can heal those broken fences, broken relationships is God himself. My prayer for you this week, um, I'm going to pray here in just a minute. I pray that whatever that thing is on your heart, I guess there is probably something. There's something that's weighing you down. There's some relationships that need to be fixed. I ask that you give it to God. You know, this whole stepping out in faith is everything giving it to God. It's not doing it ourselves. It's letting him be the king, letting him be in charge, letting him be who he is. Fixing isn't something we can do. The only person who can fix relationships is Christ. So let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much uh, uh, for your son and dying for us. Uh, Lord, we know that there are sins in our lives that have broken relationships amongst uh, one another. I ask uh, that you heal our hearts, uh, that you heal those that we've broken, our, broken their hearts. Uh, Lord, we ask for you to mend fences, and we ask uh, that you take these burdens from us and that we give it to you. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.